Hey y'all, it's Alicia and welcome back to Alicia's Crafty Hoplop. It is Tuesday morning y'all. It is Tuesday morning bright and early and I think a lot of you are going to be watching this and just as you're getting up and I'm going to just be going to bed. Uh, what I learned is that I, you know I got up super early yesterday morning. Super early like 5 30 to have my coffee and then start my day of cleaning and disinfecting. But y'all, my apartment averaged between 92 and 95 all day. So I couldn't get much done during the day. I literally would work 15 minutes and need to sit for 35. So I figured out that until the sun went down, I wasn't going to get much done. So really at like 5.30, I went for a walk and it was cooler outside than it was in my apartment. So uh, I ended up just realizing that I took a break until 7 and started again but that means I'm way behind. So I stayed up very late tonight and my hope is that I'll put on a little sleeping mask and I'll be able to sleep until the afternoon and then I'll get up and I'll work throughout the whole evening again and I'll have everything done for Wednesday. But I sure didn't get as much done as I was hoping to, which means I gotta hustle my muscle today. So if I'm non-responsive to texts and emails, that's why. Um, it's only because I'm on a deadline y'all and I don't have any flexibility. But I did want to share with you my no paper left behind results just because um, I used the paper as you know for a lot of my newbie swap and I want to finish that and get that out in the mail and I don't I so I have to show you the no paper left behind results so I can finish decorating for the reveal video. Um, so let's do this now. Now, it is probably a week earlier than you're supposed to do it. I've never done this before. So I don't know that it's okay that I'm showing you the result a week before the end of the month. I hope that's okay with Susan and with the other ladies who organized this. Um, I just have to do it in this order, y'all. So I haven't decorated the front of Erica's book because I'm going to do that for the reveal. That's one of the reasons why I wanna do this video now. Um, so you, you know I used this was a 12 by 12 package of paper and it came with chipboard and stickers and I didn't count the chipboard and stickers because uh, this is no paper left behind not no chipboard left behind so I focused on the 12 sheets of paper I built a really big book and I did give you a quick preview but now it's full of embellishments and things so I don't want to show you the inside um, but I did use the entire collection for that and that did use up a ton of the paper y'all um, however, I then built pinwheels, little pinwheels, out of the paper. And I know you can't tell on my camera, but I did glisten them up using Craft Twinkle, so they do glimmer very nicely. And it also made the paper better quality. So I made a bunch of these. And then some of them, y'all, I put on these amazing holographic um, mermaidy mint green straws. And then others I put on the holographic pink ones, which I'll show you. So I made a bunch of these cute little embellishments. Really simple but fun for summer. And Tony Craftbridge is the one I learned how to do this from two years ago. I'll link her video down below. She does them with Maggie Holmes and she adds string and all sorts of things. I, I sort of make mine more plain, but I really like them for decorating. Um, I cover up the back with a little jemmy. Just super cute. Um, so I made a bunch of those and then with the scraps y'all I made these cute little banners and they're going to be used to put the person's name so that on the outside of the packaging it'll have their name and I made several of those using scraps and I thought this was a really good use of scraps actually instead of just flags to make these cute little banners that could hang it with their names on it so I did that with some of the teeny scraps, I made like these little ruffles that I use for bag toppers. And I made uh, maybe four or five of these. I didn't have that many scraps in this size. So I'll show you what I mean. So for instance, these are some of the leftover cut aparts I'm gifting to my newbie swap partner. So for the bag topper, there's the ruffle. This is a teeny little envelope I made out of one of the scraps with a button and some string and some small pieces cut to look like letters. So I used the scraps for that too. And then I also made another bag topper. This is actually a pinwheel kit. And so it has another one of those ruffles and then a pinwheel on it. And then some of the paper cut into the pinwheel sizes for my partner. So I used some of that too for the paper. And then I also made two mini embellishment shaker boxes using the 
paper collection. And there's the other one. And then I prepped two card bases, but it's not for this swap. Um, it's for another one that's coming up. There's one. And where is the other? There's the other. Sorry about this, y'all. And there's the other. And I did stickle and glitter them up. And I was thinking this one's actually going to be a card. This may actually go into my tag flip that I'm making for this particular person. Um, and so what did I have left, y'all? I had the, the piece to show you. This is what I got left. That's it. And I could have made this into another ruffle. Now, what's interesting is I normally don't want to use all my paper. Like I, you know, when I'm using my Minte or my favorite Prima or Stamperia, I fill it with like the Tim Holtz pad or other things to make my paper stretch out. So it takes me two or three months to finish a paper pad. And I normally don't want it to be rushed like this. But because I was doing the newbie swap and the angel had gifted me that paper collection, I thought, well, this was a great chance for me to do no paper left behind. And here's what I learned, y'all. I'm often left with pieces like this in my scrap bin. And then I don't always find the time to go make the ruffles and stuff. And so this just sits in my scrap bin until I have to punch out rosette centers or something like that. The nice thing about no paper left behind is because you have to finish it all, you do make the ruffles and everything right away. And as you can see, I use them right away for the packaging. So, I mean, I can see the advantage to it. I don't know that, I mean, I'll be doing it probably when I have specific paper collections where I want to use the whole thing. Because again, normally I like my paper to stretch out over two to three months, but I thought this was really fun to try. And I was really excited that in the end, this is really all I had left. So I think that's amazing. It went really far. I mean, you have to think about it. This book is huge, y'all. It's huge. So it built this, these two, a ton of pinwheels, like a ton of pinwheels, pinwheel embellishments, a, a mini cut apart kit, because I did use the cut aparts for the book, a pinwheel kit, bag toppers, ruffles for packaging, um, and two shaker embellishment boxes. So, I mean, it went really far the 12 by 12. So I think, you know, if you haven't tried No Paper Left Behind, I strongly suggest you give it a try, y'all. First of all, it's a really cool challenge to see if you can do it. And then I think the other thing is it just, it helps you make things that you actually will use in, you know, your swaps and in your racks. So like, I didn't have to think about making packaging because it was already made. So there you go, y'all. In some ways, this made things a lot easier. So something to think about. I had a lot of fun doing it this month. And again, I don't know that I'll do it again unless I have a specific collection uh, like this where I want to use up the whole thing. But it was sure fun to give it a try. And it was a challenge. Um, and I will say, like, I really like these little mini scrap banners. And they're great for putting people's names on so you hang it outside of their packaging. And I don't normally make them because I, again, I don't I have the intention of always sitting down with these and doing it, but I don't do it. And the thing about no paper left behind is you got to use every piece. So you do end up doing it, y'all. It's pretty remarkable. Well, y'all, as you know, I've pre-recorded some Happy Mail videos for you to watch. I'll probably be slumbering and then cleaning the night away. Uh, it had been a long time for the pinwheels. I always use my glue gun. And y'all know I don't like the glue gun because the glue is not that adhesive. I mean, I was so annoyed at one point because like it didn't even hold these jemmies on well. And I had to like redo some of them with fabric tac or with EC6000. Um, I'm never happy with the quality of glue and glue gun. But I also burnt myself twice and I have a little blister. I'd forgotten. I, I didn't bother to put on, you know, those craft tips that Cruz got me. And I paid the price, y'all. But these were super fun, and yeah, and that is my no paper left behind progress report. I did it, y'all. I did it. And I think you should take the challenge at least one time. At least one time. Maybe for if you're joining us for no spend, no buy August, um, pull out one of your collections and see what you can do with it, y'all. All right, well, that is it for me. I have pre recorded videos of some mail for you to watch, but I'll be slumbering and then cleaning my little heart out, y'all. Uh, wishing for you a happy and a healthy and hopefully a super creative day. And I'll see y'all real soon.
Bye for now.